And I want to tell you a little bit, a story about a little girl who had a journey. And um, she grew up in Chicago. And unfortunately, her life didn't start like a dream life. She had a very tough life. There was a lot of physical abuse by people in the neighborhood. And it hurt her mentally and emotionally. And she got into drugs and even got into juvenile detention. And her life was going the wrong way. It was a nightmare life. It was a nightmare life. But her father took her aside one day and told her, listen, daughter, there's three types of people in the world. There's the people that are going to make a good life and they're going to actually make it better. They're going to change their life. They're going to do something different. That's one type of person. They're going to have a big goal and they're going to go for it. And then there's a second type of person that watches those people become successful, but they're on the sidelines. Their own life, they're not changing. And then there's the third type of people. They don't even know it's possible <laughs> to make a dream life. And he said, which one are you going to be? And she thought about it. She thought about it actually all day, all night. She couldn't sleep. And then after a day or so, she decided what her dream was and she went for it. Years later, she became a TV broadcaster, later a talk show host, and now one of the most wealthy Americans. You know her as Oprah Winfrey. It's a true story. So the question is always, are we going to be the one that give everything to make our dream come true and think about what we could be and make it happen? Or are we going to be on the sidelines or just be ignorant of any possibility? So that's always the question. So here are some tips to talk about, some practical tips now that we already know what our dream life is and we know we need to pursue it or we want to pursue it because it's so good, good life we're dreaming of. So how are we going to do it? There's four steps in anatomy. The first step is to become independent, like the journey of riding a bicycle. So I hope most of us know how to ride a bicycle. And maybe you remember at the beginning, you had to get on the bike, even though you were very scared. And they put the training wheels on. So if you fall over and even the parents were beside you, but nothing happened until you sat and not only just sat, but you had to pedal. You had to start to push the pedal. No one can push the pedals for you. And in anatomy, pedaling means using the products, coming to the meetings starting to do simple things, but doing something that's helping you move forward. So you're the independent one. You cannot depend on other people to push the pedal for you. You have to push the pedal and take the actions. And maybe you don't go far. And even with the training wheels, you're going to fall down anyway, right? Because you start to go fast and then too fast, you still fall down. So, but you have to take that first step of being independent. Now, what happens? We have to practice, second stage. Practice, you know, you're pedaling and pedaling and you took the training wheels off. So now you're not afraid to go to the meeting. You're not afraid to tell your friend about the wonderful shampoo or the great uh, probiotics. And, you know, but sometimes you're going to fall down because those training wheels are off and you're not that good yet. But you're going to start to pedal those faster and do it more. And guess what? Your, par your sponsor is beside you, ready to help you and give you advice. But again, you're not going to learn to pedal alone without training wheels unless you fall down sometimes. So someone's going to shut the door and your foot happens actually. <laughs> um, someone's going to say no that you really thought was going to really try the product or someone's gonna say no when you invite them to a meeting and you can't give up, right? You have to keep practicing and practicing. And if you don't practice, what happens? The bicycle sits 
on the yard and nothing happens. So practicing every day is really important. And you know, we have all those little checklists of, you know, sharing the product and reading the book and coming to the meeting. So, you know, we have a list of what you need to do. So just practice, right? Practice makes perfect. And if you read the book, you know, the five o'clock club or the atomic habits, they say, you just have to do it. Even if it's a few minutes or five minutes a day on the worst day, then some other days you do it for an hour or two hours, but just every day to practice, practice, practice. Isn't there an old saying, practice makes perfect? I heard that before. Has anybody heard that one? Practice makes perfect. So just practice. You know, anatomy is a very simple formula. There's like a couple of checklists and it's very simple. So we just have to take action every day. Then we go to the next level. Ah, to become an expert, right? To become really good. You know, when you ride a bicycle, I remember I used to have an orange bicycle with a banana seat. I don't have a picture of it, but after riding, then I would, then we would skid to, to stop. I don't know if any of you know how to do that. You, you kick the back to the side and you skid to a stop. You do all these tricks because you become an expert and you can go up the hill. You can go down the hill. You can, you can, uh, Take the lead when you're riding with your friends, and then you're going to teach your friends the same anatomy. Look, now there's another friend riding with him. And the sponsors are just smiling, so happy watching you, meeting your person. Did you take someone to the meeting? They're just enjoying you. And the same thing is like with the making a presentation. You know, it's like going up the hill and going down the hill when it's scary. You know, the first time you make a presentation, you Make, we make lots of mistakes, but gradually you get better and better, like riding a bike, and you can make your presentation easier every time. And then you can teach the next person um, how to duplicate yourself. That's out of it, just duplication. And then final stage, becoming professional. Wow. Do you see the energy there? The positivity, the confidence. Oh, I think they're kind of smiling, but they're still painfully working. Always working, working. Why? Because they have to go and help their other people, right? To become number one. Look at the guy on the right side. I think he's ahead. Is he ahead? I don't know who's ahead. Maybe the black suit is ahead. But they're really putting everything into it. You know, we have a chart sometimes about the timeline. And if you go around the track, if you have to go around the track a hundred times, the faster you go around the track, the sooner you finish. So the faster you work, the sooner you get to the finish line. And that's true in a race, but it's also true with anatomy. So we have a little saying like, you can take forever to become a sales master or forever to become a sharing master or forever to become a royal master. But if we squeeze the time together, we put all our energy into a short time, then we get to get to the stage quicker and really have that longer successful life. So we don't have to be in pain all the time. So no pain, no gain, go fast as soon as possible, right? So these are the four stages. We have to pedal every day. We have to try it. And if we fall down, we have to keep practicing until we get that smile. It becomes easier and easier and it's natural. We're, we're very confident more and more. So we're going further ahead. Even if we fall down, we keep practicing. Then we become the expert and we start to teach our friend how to do it. We're not expert yet, but we're becoming an expert and we're teaching them to do it and to ride with us. And then finally, we're doing our biggest strength to get to that finish line as soon as possible, right? So that's the tale of Adam's journey. That's what I wanted to share tonight. Thank you.